Welcome to the next series of five instructionals where we will discuss paraline projection drawings along with shadows to add depth to drawings. Paraline drawings are a measured and scaled three-dimensional drawing. It gives a simplified but somewhat unreal view of the overall object or building that we are trying to design or represent. They are diagrammatic in their nature and as a result are very good for explaining how something is organized or put together. Paraline drawings are defined as follows. There are no converging lines in the construction of the three-dimensional view. Parallel lines in the object or building we are representing remain parallel in the paraline drawing. The geometry in paraline drawing is to scale and is true length. This makes them both easier to construct than perspective views and useful if you need to interpolate drawings. Finally, the z-axis used to create the third dimension is typically but not always vertical in respect to the picture plane. The other form of three-dimensional representation is a perspective view. Perspective views are taken from a more natural or person's eye viewpoint which makes them great for giving an impression of the building's form and context. The main difference of course is that the planes of view converge to a vanishing point. The convergence of the axis means that scaling directly from a perspective is not possible unless it is a one-point perspective with a picture plane or cut plane parallel to the page. With the ubiquitous use of CAD modeling software, it is not really needed or very productive to generate measured perspective views from first principles, as software can do it much more quickly. Even for simple hand-drawn perspectives, architectural illustrators will usually model the main elements of the building and the scene in CAD and then work over the top by hand, adding detail that is difficult to model. You will often hear the terms paraline projection and axonometric drawing or projection used interchangeably, as the term axonometric is a derivative of to measure along axis, which is a reference to the fact that paraline or axonometric drawings are to scale. The misuse of the term axonometric is that people often refer to it as a particular type of paraline view or projection, which it is not. It is a broad description to describe a family of different measured three-dimensional view projections. There are two main families of paraline or axonometric projections. The first are isometric projections, which contain three variations which are pure isometric, diametric, and trimetric projections. The other family of paraline or axonometric projections are the oblique views. These are a bit more abstract looking than isometric projections, but are easier to construct and very good for explaining things diagrammatically, which is why oblique views are used quite a lot. Isometric views are perhaps one of the more widely used paraline view projections. The term isometric view is derived from the equal measures, which is construction of the angles between the various view axes. The isometric view can be characterized by the fact that each plane of view has equal emphasis and that each view is a construction of a rectilinear orthographic view, but it is not rectilinear. It is constructed more like a parallelogram. This is because the vanishing angles are typically 30 degrees each side of vertical, meaning that the plans are slightly squashed and will need to be redrawn. Despite this, the views are popular because they have a more natural point of view. The plus points for an isometric view is mainly the aesthetics of the viewpoint and that makes it easier for them to read but it does have drawbacks and these are that they require more construction and take longer to produce because of the non-rectilinear plan geometry. A diametric view is a distortion of a pure isometric view that is flattened out to place more emphasis on the side views. The vanishing geometry left and right is equal but the view emphasis is not equal. The vanishing angles in the X and Y axis are symmetrical, like an isometric view, but at a much greater angle relative to each other. Like the isometric view, the view is skewed and non-rectilinear. The extreme rake of the vanishing geometry means that this is not a very commonly used paraline view projection. The plus point of a diametric projection is that it moves the isometric view more towards a standing point of view and with the angle being symmetrical 
it is still easy to draw using one set square. However, the flat geometry makes constructing an accurate plan view problematic. The final variation in the isometric projection family is the trimetric projection, where the views and vanishing angles are all in unequal measures. In a trimetric projection, one plane is given more emphasis. However, the internal angle of the plan is usually 120 degrees, like an isometric view, and it also has a lower and more frontal angle of view. A trimetric projection would be great for master planning massing studies, but it has its drawbacks in that there is a significant amount of redrawing. Because the angles are different, it also means using more than one set square, and this can be cumbersome. The second family of paraline projections are the oblique projections. The plan oblique paraline drawings, or axonometric, is perhaps the most widely used projection, as it is fast to construct, as the plan view is true, and so can be traced directly. A plan oblique can be characterized by the emphasis on the top or plan view, and it is usually always constructed by projecting vertically from a rotated plan view. The plan oblique paraline is often mistakenly called an axonometric view. So most times when someone asks for an axonometric view, what they usually mean is an oblique plan projection. The main plus points with the oblique plan projection is that they are easy to construct and very useful for producing diagrammatic representations of objects and buildings. However, some people find them difficult to read as the right angle in the plan can often trick your perception and in some cases makes reading the drawing almost impossible. The other oblique projection is an elevation oblique. These paraline projections are not widely used but are good in instances where emphasis is on the face of a building. An oblique elevation projection can be characterized by the emphasis on the elevational view and is constructed by direct projection to the left or right of the elevation to give a sense of depth. Because of this, they are especially good when producing streetscapes or other urban design frameworks. The main plus points with the elevation oblique is that they are easy to construct. However, they often need to be foreshortened in the receding plane to give them a more natural looking viewpoint. You can see this in the two three-dimensional views. In the first one, the receding plane of view has been scaled at its normal scale, but the one on the far right, we have foreshortened the receding view to half of what it is in the normal scale of the elevation to give it a more natural look. The versatility of paraline views makes them a useful communication and design tool. The convention is also quite flexible, as seen on this slide where the third dimension is produced with a z-axis at 45 degrees to the picture plane. In this instance, the plan oblique was an effective way to show what parts of the city were being modified in contrast to the parts of the city that were being left alone. The main city plan was left as a plain orthographic plan, but the proposal was drawn as a modified plan oblique, which made it look as though it was popping out of the page. So long as the rules of the paraline projection of scaling and things remaining parallel and consistent within the drawing, it is possible to modify the more widely used conventions.